What's up cousins? My name is Ryan and in this tutorial I'm going to teach two very important concepts to learn for anyone looking to use Jetpack Compose. This video has a complimentary article which goes into more detail so check out the description box below for more information. The first question I had with this new library was simply, what is a composable? I was already very familiar with Android's view system and how to create user interfaces within it using XML and I always find that a good way to learn something new is to connect it with things that I already know. A view in Android can be thought of as the most fundamental building block of a user interface, whether you create it in Java, Kotlin, or XML. A view can be a button, but it can also be a container, which we often refer to as either a layout or a view group. It is important to understand that these containers are still views, which is made obvious by observing that a view group is a child class of view. In the old system, UI classes like activities and fragments had what we call a view hierarchy, which you can actually look at using the debugger. As you can see, the hierarchy is based on how these various XML views are nested within each other. So, we have established that a view is the most fundamental building block of user interfaces in Android, at least in the view system. So the next question is pretty simple. Is a composable the same thing as a view? My answer is both yes and no. From a conceptual or abstract perspective, yes, a composable fills exactly the same role as a view, and they even behave in similar ways. A composable can be a button, or it can be the root container of the whole screen full of child composables. There is also something resembling a view hierarchy, which I go into more detail on in the article. With that being said, from an implementation perspective, composables are not views. In case you have never worked with Compose before, every composable is actually a function which has the at composable annotation. Instead of nesting XML tags inside of each other, we nest composables inside of each other. Also, unless you need some kind of interoperability, everything is written in Kotlin, and this library makes maximal usage of Kotlin's best features. If you're still with me, do not skip this part of the video because it is important. Rendering user interfaces on a device screen is an expensive operation in terms of system resources. For example, the very purpose of a recycler view in the old view system is to use the view holder pattern, which allows you to avoid constantly inflating new views as the user scrolls through large datasets. This greatly improves performance. By design, Jetpack Compose can be set up to only redraw the parts of the user interface which actually need to be redrawn, in theory providing better performance. This process of redrawing certain parts of the UI, which is similar to React hooks for my web devs out there, is known as recomposition. To illustrate how recomposition occurs and how I really screwed it up at first, let us take a look at an example from my Sudoku app which was written purely in Compose. First I will show you how to do it properly, and then I will show you my mistake. In this application, I have a coroutine based counter in the presentation logic class. Each tick, it informs my view model to increment the state of its timer by one. The view model, which can be, but does not need to be a jetpack view model, exposes a function reference which my composables can bind to. In the root composable of this screen, I pass in this view model. I also pass the view model down to each child composable which needs to observe some kind of data from it. Here we have the timer text class, which binds to the view model using a lambda expression and a remembered value. When you remember a value or variable, Compose will watch for changes to that value, in other words changes in its state, and it will recompose, that is redraw, the part of the UI which is associated with that value or variable. To see this in action, I have set a breakpoint in this composable and you will see how this code executes each clock tick. I have also put a breakpoint into the parent composable of timer text, as you can see up here, but notice how it is not being triggered. which means that it is not recomposing. That's what we're looking for. Now, when configured like that, it works well, but it is not too difficult to make this huge mistake which can make your app unusably laggy. 
Let's see what happens when I move the remembered state variable into the parent composable, which was my original approach. So I've set up a breakpoint over top the timer state and an unrelated part of the user interface, which happens to be in the same composable. I'm now going to keep hitting resume program and you'll see that on every clock tick, not only does the timer state change, but this composable down here also gets redrawn unnecessarily. Not good. So the key takeaway here is that recomposition can be done very wrong if you are not careful, and the debugger is an awesome tool to find out if you have a bunch of unnecessary recompositions occurring. If you found this video helpful, do me a favor and hit the like button below, subscribe, and write a comment on what you think about Compose so far. Peace out, y'all. I'm out.